my beautiful Leos and welcome to your horoscope for November of 2020 where Leo this month we've got some switching and swapping around going on we've got Mercury coming out of retrograde Mars is coming out of retrograde Neptune is coming out of retrograde plus we've got the Jupiter Pluto conjunction coming together an eclipse happening this month and a super moon so no no lack of goodness no lack of entertainment happening uh in November not for you anyways okay <laughs> Now, before we jump in and get to what's going on this month, remember that the eat and greets are hot. They are fire. This month, we've got beautiful friends coming to the community who are ready to share. And I just heard that Omari Martin is going to come and share with us this month as well, as we've got Matthew Lee Met coming. We have got Judith Hill, Simon Vorster, a fellow YouTuber, will be here as well. We've got Mecca Woods coming, Demetrius Bagley. We've got Vanessa Montgomery coming. I mean, there's a lot of astrology learning in the eat and greets happening this month. So I hope you'll grab your snack, grab your chart, come learn with us, come field out some questions that you've got on the topics that they'll be presenting. Okay. And remember, if you'd like to see the eat and greets absolutely ad free, you can come and join me on Patreon. I would love to see you over there. I would love to see you anywhere that we are able to connect. Okay. All right, Leo, let's get in here and see what's going on in November. Right at the beginning of the month, as we come in on the third, we have got Mercury coming out of retrograde, coming direct in the energy of Libra. Now, this is going to light up your third house space, the third house thinking, contracts, communications, things with our siblings. It's also buying and selling of things, that website, the writing that you're doing of the book. Maybe you're learning something or teaching something. So things of the mind and of the mouth come from the third house area. So one of the things I want to point out to you is that Mercury has already been through Libra. So you've already seen this in the ways that you're thinking, in the ways that you're communicating, your contracts, the things that you're buying and selling are these things and are the relationships, Libra, connected to this area of your life? Are they in balance? Are they in good shape? Are you on the same page? Do you need to review, revise? And now that you've done that and you've already been through this area, because think about it, it's almost like, okay, well, just back here a month or so ago, you started to work in that area. Things are getting done. You're moving something forward. Maybe you even made an agreement, a relationship agreement with an organization or a person. We went forward a little bit and then you had to review that for a minute. And now it's like, okay, let's bring that forward. So in that area of connection and balance and relationship, especially intimate relationships, you know, what's the new conversation or what's the new revised contract that's on the table or the new thought, something around that. Either way, Mercury's direct here so we can take contracts, negotiations of all kinds of varieties, much more in a forward motion in a forward manner now the thing i want to point out as well is that even though it is mercury is out of retrograde today he's not quite up to speed we need him to resume his orbit and we also need him to get past 12 degrees of Scorpio because that's where he went retrograde. So if we really want to see things moving forward and know that they're steady, we want to see him get past 12 degrees of Scorpio, um, which we will see happen this month so we can really see him resume his orbit. But out of retrograde is also really good as well. Now on the 10th, we see Mercury start that move towards that 12 degrees of Scorpio because he's going to move back into the energy of Scorpio. This lights up your fourth house space. And I have to tell you, the fourth house is really very strong for you this month, Leo. So it's really like career and stuff is on the back burner, but home and family and really getting your emotional life and your emotional foundations and your home settings, that's where the real magic is at. That's where you can really make some things happen this month. So as Mercury moves back into the energy of Scorpio in that fourth house, you've become an observer of this area. There's something deep. There's something passionate. There's something intimate around home and you've been observing it. You've needed to take a little bit more and be as more assertive in your decision making in this area. So this is again with you. Some of you Leos, I'm like, did you get married? Did you move in with somebody? Did you make a deep intimate commitment to something in the home zone? Now for some of you as Mercury does move here and we welcome in the moon this month and Venus and stuff like that, this could be a month for you Leo truly that you are making a move for sure, but you could also just as easily be working from home or redoing home, including that emotional foundation or the family foundation in some way this month. But either way, career is kind of the back burner. Home and the home life is what's really been under observation and you're making a lot of decisions on this particular month. 
Now, on the 12th, we're going to see Jupiter and Pluto come together for the third conjunction that they have had this month. We saw it in April, we saw it in June, and we're going to see it now. Now, in April, when they came together, they were both direct. In June, when they came together, they were both retrograde, and they are both out of retrograde again. So really, when we think about that movement throughout the year, as Jupiter and Pluto come together, this is the energy of success right? They go, boom, you can take something that is creative and you can make it profitable. By the way, you have the inner strength to do it, to meet the challenges and to succeed. So I like to call it the Sonic the Hedgehog energy because it's like, you know, when he gets the chaos diamond and then he's like, doo, 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 and he's running and he's really able to get something done under the energy of their conjunction. It's short lived, but once you start it and get it going, you're able to do it. So I would ask you between your um, sixth house energies, what have you seen? change and become a little bit different as you've gone on this year what did you start back in April that you know the world shut down so maybe you were trying to start a project or get your daily routine in order get your health in order um, maybe you've been trying to have your own business in some way shape or form right whatever has been going in that sixth house of daily routines mundane health and wellness including your mental health and wellness what did you start there you reviewed it in June and now you're able to allow it to come full circle and really become something when it grows up. That Jupiter and Pluto energy here is immense internal strength, which we can turn into something Capricorn material and have it come to flourishing here in your sixth house. On the 14th, we see Mars coming out of retrograde. He's direct here in the energy of Aries, lighting up your ninth house space. Now, Mars has been retrograde in this ninth house space. So when it comes to things like publishing, marketing, broadcasting, expansion, higher learning, travel, even um, legal conversations, you know, maybe there you've even had some doubts around it with Mars retrograde. Am I studying the right thing? Is this the right commitment to make? Is this the way that I want to be out in the world and I want to expand? Oh man, I got to reschedule that vacation, right? Anything in that expand you out kind of energy you could have had doubts you could have been needing to relook at the strategy or reflect on if you even still have the desire to do that particular thing so now that mars is out of retrograde here on the 14th which doesn't mean he's ready to roll he too needs to have his cosmic coffee wake up and get to it but he is at least comfortable in the energy of aries so as he wakes up here this is the place where i think you start to look at okay who do I want to be, my identity, Aries, in this particular area of my life? Do I want to study this particular thing? Do I want to enter into this legal contract? Or how do I want to um, proceed in a legal contract? Where do I want to go to travel, right? It's really this kind of energy that, you know, Mars and Aries is so boosted here that it's like, What's the identity and what's the strategy that you're going to take to actualize that identity in this particular area of your life? So it's time to start walking like that new identity that you've decided and re-strategized thir- dur- during the retrograde. Now on the 15th, we see this new moon happening in the energy of Scorpio. And on the 21st, we're actually going to welcome Venus into this area. So this is a very charged area of your life, the fourth house. But at this new moon in Scorpio, we're going to plant your seeds of intention to begin something new in the fourth house and actually at this particular new moon because it's um in the depth of that Scorpio energy, I have this sense that your household is expanding. It's growing in some way. You know, maybe you add somebody to your family, you move someplace bigger, or you're really connecting with people that feel like, oh, this is my family. But there's this expansion or change of family that I think becomes available for you at this new moon. And we really watch it play out over this next four weeks but either way you want to plant your seeds to begin something new here do you want to move do you want to travel are you have you been working on your heart your emotional foundation have you just been working on the house you're like i gotta get this technology in order so that i can work from home i want to create a business where i can travel and work from any place that I'm at, right? So something like that in the home zone, there's definitely a resetting. Now, I also think because we will have a lunar eclipse and it's just a moon energy that adds some additional spice to the month, that you could have a family member that actually needs your help or you're taking charge or care of them in this next four weeks, okay? Like I said, on the 21st, we see Venus move into the energy of Scorpio. So this is going to attract harmony, attract some goodness. She's our smallest benefic planet, but she's going to attract some good things to home so this could be 
making money from home, added relationships, growth of love and harmony in relationships from home home. This could also be with Venus in the energy of Scorpio, a place where I would tell you that while Venus attracts all these good things in, you want to also be mindful that she doesn't become obsessive, possessive, and jealous. So if that's something that's happening in your home zone, step to that, step to the evolutionary version of Venus. I'd rather have peace. I'd rather have balance. I'd rather have diplomacy here so that there can be good here in this particular area. But the ability to actualize money from home is Yes, definitely a Venetian quality here. Now, also on the 21st, we're going to see the sun move into the energy of Sagittarius. So this is the fifth house for you, right? So this is this beautiful energy over here where the sun's bringing light, heat, life, and vitality. So we're motivated. There's movement and readiness happening over here in your fifth house. This is true love, play, creation, um, taking a risk on something. And you're taking a Sagittarian risk, right? I want to stretch beyond my fingertips. I want to go beyond my horizon. I want to know more. I want to, I want to maybe have a different belief in religion. Like I'm passionate. I'm fiery about this. I also feel like because this is the sun, your ruling planet in Sagittarius fifth house, it's like spiritualizing that inner child or spiritualizing the joy. And maybe even children in your life are having a spiritual experience at this particular moment in time. And you are shining bright in that experience. You're bringing something joyful out of hiding you know did you secretly run off and get married did you secretly have a project and now you're ready to express it and bring it out and show it in the light of day whatever it is that fifth house energy is actualized moving and ready for some new beliefs and some new adventure with the um, Sagittarian energy being there on the 29th, we see Neptune coming out of retrograde here in the energy of Pisces. This is in your eighth house. Now, when Neptune is retrograde, we need it. We need to be able to fantasize and dream and create things in this intangible place so that we can later bring them into contact with something that makes them tangible. When Neptune is retrograde, it is tangible energy, like it is concrete. It is hard to create in that energy. It's hard to visualize your future, right? Because it's like the um, the invisible between the way between the veil energy got shut off. So essentially things are very concrete. And what we do is we take the things in the eighth house, our intimacy, our joint resources, our collaboration, our fear, our pain, our astrology, our sex, and we make it very real, very concrete. And we have to look at it and say, does this fit my ideal? Does this fit the ideals that I have about myself in the world? Does this fit my ideal partnership? Is this right for me? Do I want to share money with this joint resource? Do I want to collaborate with this person? Is this the right sexual relationship for me? Are we secure? Are we intimate? Are we dived in? Right? Whatever that is. And we get very serious with it because there's no fake in it. There's no fake in the funk when Neptune is out of retrograde. So as Neptune um, moves back or is in retrograde, as Neptune moves out of retrograde, great and comes direct. Now we get to say, okay, I saw it. I, I feel like I can distinguish between, you know, maybe I was just, I, I'm not over idealizing this person or this deal or this opportunity. It's really what it is. And now I can go create forward with it. I've seen it for what it is. So I can create the next thing for us. And we have to be able to reach into that intangible space and create. Before a chair was a chair, it was just a thought, right? It was just in the intangibles and now we have all kinds of chairs. So that's what you're doing. You're gonna create a nice set of chairs, but in your eighth house. Now, as we close out this month on November 30th, we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening in the energy of Gemini, which moves us back just a couple houses and we light up your 11th house space. So in that 11th house journey, right, the full moon, first of all, says this is the emotions. The emotions are going to kick up. There's going to be a little bit of entanglement that happens. We have to shift emotionally. But in the energy of Gemini, I think conversation. I think networking. I think details. So what are the details of your friendships, of your groupings, of how you are being known and making a name for yourself out in this social world? What's the situation with your technology? Is it up to date? What are the details of that? So at this full moon lunar eclipse, we're going to have to end something, acknowledge something, or make a very big adjustment to this area of your life. And it's you know, in the social zone as well, or with your friends or in how we're seeing your voice, Gemini, come out, what are you saying, right? Words mean things. 
So what are you saying? What are you speaking about? Are you speaking about something that has value in the world? Are you speaking about something that even has value to you? Or are you just talking to hear yourself make noise, Leo? These are questions we have to ask at this time. As well, the people around you, what are they saying? What are they saying to you? What are they saying about you? Do you have a tribe that is speaking abundance into your life? Are you speaking abundance into a tribe? Now, I also think about the Gemini beauty of the attention to details for your long range plans, goals, and designs that you want for yourself, for your aspirations. This is a full moon that says, okay, we've made some changes, Leo. We have made some changes this year. We need to relook over this plan for our future and really get into the details of how we're going to make that happen. Now, remember, Mars came out of retrograde in the energy of Aries. So this is a question. Who are you showing up to expand yourself, to take yourself in that identity to that next, to that next horizon, beyond that horizon? And is that factored into your long range plans, goals, designs, contracts, business deals, and everything else. So it's a busy month. We begin to have energies moving forward. There are things to consider. There are decisions and expansions that I believe will be made this month, Leo, and none of it is short of absolutely incredible in your life because it is a part of the life path. It is a part of fulfilling the lessons we have to learn this month. So we begin to pick up speed this month. We'll can see that continue as we move forward into December and January and forward. So, you know, think about April and what was slowing down, shutting down, and things weren't necessarily moving forward for good or for, for bad, right? Now we start to see them take some shape and some form and some forward motion. All right, Leos, I think it's going to be a good month. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the eat and greets. I'll see you on Patreon. I'll see you on Instagram. I will just see you where I see you, Leo. Have a great month, okay? Bye.